Hi everyone, my name is Julia Onorati, and I'm going to be discussing the Black Cayman today. So if we first just take a look at the taxonomic classification of the Black Cayman. And so they're from the Kingdom Animalia, the Phylum Chordata, Class Sarcopterygii, Order Crocodilia, Family Alligatoridae, Genus Melanosuchus, and the species is known as Melanosuchus niger. So as we just mentioned previously, the black caiman is technically part of the Crocodilia order and the alligator family. So while they show some traits of crocodiles and are technically part of that group, they're more closely related to alligators. These animals are found widely distributed throughout the Amazon River Basin, which looks like this, as well as parts of North America, specifically Florida. And then finally, they're also found in South Central America. So these guys are typically found in shallow fresh water, slow moving rivers, streams, and wetlands. They can grow up to 20 feet long, and you can see in this clip that they have their eyes and their nose on the top of their head with armored skin that is a darker color, which we believe helps them camouflage and absorb heat. They also have very good hearing and eyesight. Now, while the typical lifespan of a black caiman is around 30 to 40 years old, um, some have been documented to live between 70 and 90 years old. So despite having this multi-layered, keratinized, armored skin, the crocodiles still are able to use mechanoreceptors, which are located on their postcranial and cranial scales, in order to detect mechanical changes. So black caimans have a pretty long and um, laterally flattened tail, which allows them to swim up to 30 miles per hour by moving this tail in like a sinusoidal, otherwise known as S-shaped motion that we'll see in the next clip. So if we just take a quick look here at um, the shape of the black caiman teeth, we can see that they're um, pretty pointy and um, distributed all throughout the mouth. This is reflective of their carnivorous lifestyle. They typically eat um, fish, birds, sometimes deer, or even anacondas. But their teeth are designed more towards gripping rather than um, ripping. So they'll sometimes eat their prey whole rather than tearing at it, just like this guy is doing here. Something that's pretty unique to these black caiman crocodiles is that they have a bite force of seven tons, which we can see here. And now in slow motion. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be caught that close to a black caiman. Black caimans show sexual dimorphism in the shape of their skull. The males are going to have a skull length that is about 30% larger than the females. And overall, the males will be a bit larger than the females as a result of faster and longer growth. This often results in sexual selection, which means that females prefer males that are larger. In order to attract females, males will produce a low bellowing sound and slap their snouts on the water. They sometimes even blow water from their noses. As they approach the female, they'll rub each other's snouts and the male will grasp the female so that they can align their cloaca and the male will insert itself into the female. While males will mate with multiple females per mating season, the females will lay their eggs from September to December in close proximity to other black caiman females who are also laying their eggs. 
and you can see a female laying her eggs in this video here. After the female lays her eggs, she's going to guard them until they hatch. And the hatchlings will emit a sound that synchronizes their hatching with the other eggs around them. So then the mother will take these juveniles to the nearest river or stream and she'll care for them for several weeks after their hatching. Not a whole lot is understood about how black caimans communicate with one another yet, but what we do know is that they produce this low grumbling noise in order to communicate with one another, whether that be for mating or for warning purposes. We were basically able to set up an array of hydrophones underwater and microphones above and, and video cameras to record the full spectrum of sound and vi visual behaviour. They can even pick up, say, what the sound that a, a tadpole makes. That's how sensitive they are. Researchers listened in, expecting to hear bellows and growls. But the surprise finding was a deep underwater booming. It's like a subaudible vibration, but a bit different. And so we don't understand it properly yet, but this is sort of the last part of that puzzle is figuring out what that means. So as those researchers mentioned, um, there's not a whole lot understood about how these guys are communicating with each other. But what we do know is that this call is important for both the juveniles and the mother in order to synchronize with their siblings and the protection from the mom. Um, so now we're going to discuss the conservation status of these black caimans. And so these are considered least concern according to the IUCN Red List as of September 2014. So it's important to note that even though these um, black caimans are not technically considered endangered, they're still threatened by habitat destruction, climate change, illegal hunting, and um, more specifically illegal hunting for their meat and um, their skin for these leather goods. Their current um, population size stands at about 25,000 to 50,000 individuals, which is a pretty significant number given the amount of destruction that this group has been through. So it's safe to presume that this group is going to be around for a little while longer. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the Black Cayman as much as I did.